Hi, I'm Kurt Fry, and in this video, I'm going to continue my discussion of Markov chains. Specifically, we're going to use as our example a process transition matrix. The process we're using is steps for export approval to ship a package overseas, that is outside of the US in this case. Step zero, which we do need to include, is when a package is outside of the process and it needs to start the review. Then we have the next five steps, which are elements of the approval process. They don't all have to be done. Well, step one does, but all of the others could be optional. And then finally, we have step six, where the export has been approved. And we do not model that because at that point, the shipment has exited the process. So the scenario is reviewing shipments before exporting. There are five steps. You exit the process after step five, and step five could be done, or it could be deemed unnecessary, and the probabilities don't always have to add to one in each row because you can exit. And let's take a look at that transition matrix now. We start at step zero, and then half the time we'll go to step one, and then step two, 20% of the time, so some 20% will go directly from step zero to step two, and then if we go down a row, we see that if someone is at step one, then they will stay at step one 30% of the time, move to step two 30% of the time, step three 30% of the time, and the other probabilities are there. The first two rows all add up to one. However, below that, you can see that they do not. For step two, which is the third row down, we have 30%, 20, 20, and one, or 10 rather, and that adds up to 80%. So 20% of the time, after step two, the package has been approved and can be shipped at step six, which again is outside of our matrix. Now let's switch over to Excel and see what it takes to define a transition matrix there. I'm in Excel, and the sample file I have open is Markov Movie 02, and you can find a link to that in the video description below. The transition matrix, which is referred to as Q in this type of analysis, appears here in the range from C8 through H13. I'll start by adding some labels, and these will correspond to the steps. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 up top. Those are the two, or the destinations. And then here we have 1 excuse me, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And press tab to move to the right so I don't scroll down. I will change these labels later for a specific reason I'll demonstrate, but to make that demonstration work, I need to enter the values for the transition matrix into the worksheet cells. You will never end up as step 0 from any other step. So I will just type a 0 all through the first column, which is column C. And then I can start adding values for steps 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So from step 0, you'll go to step 1, half the time, 0. 0.5, then 0. 0.2, and I'm pressing tab to move to the right, 0. 0.15, 0. 0.1, and 0. 0.05, and enter. Because I know this row needs to add up to 1, I will click in cell I8, press Alt equal to create an auto sum formula and enter, and I get a total of one, so that's good. However, if you were watching closely, you might have noticed a possible error, and yes, this is something that I will deal with in a moment. Now go back to cell D9, and this will be for step one. So you'll stay at step one 30% of the time, 0.3, move to step two 30% of the time, also 0.3, Step 3, 30%, so 0.3, then 0 0.05 for step 4, 0.05 for step 5. And I'll press tab to move to I9 and press Alt equal. And then with my auto sum formula in place, I will press Enter. And the values that have been added up add up to 2. So let's click cell I9 and see why that is. The autosum formula includes the label in cell B9, so it's being added to my total. And this is a very common error, 
And it's the reason that you do not want to use just bare numbers as column or row labels. Instead, you want to make them text so they don't figure into this type of calculation. So in B8, I'll type step zero, and then click cell B8 after that's in, and then drag the fill handle down. And you can see that because there is a number, dragging the fill handle will increment it. So I go from step zero to step five. And just to make it look a little bit better, I will center it, and then I'll do the same up top for the column labels, step zero. I do want a space there and tab. Then after I click C7, I'll drag the fill handle to the right and center, and there are my labels. And now I can add in the rest of the values, and because I have demonstrated what's called a checksum, I can select cells I8 and I9, delete, and continue on. The values in column D for station one will all be zeros from here on, so just enter four zeros there. And then in E10, I'll start adding my new probabilities, so 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.1, enter. Then I'll have 0 0.05, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And again, these values do not have to add up to one. And in fact, they fall far below one. It's 0 0.65, it looks like. Then step four is 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.35, and 0.6, enter. And then 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 .03, and 0.7. I enter the values into this transition matrix, even though I'm not going to do any calculations on them in this video for a couple of reasons. The first is I wanted to demonstrate the possibility of an autosum error like the one I demonstrated earlier. Secondly, I wanted to give you an idea of the data that you needed and also how long it takes to enter it. This is essentially a six-stage process. You've got step zero all the way up to step five, so that's 36 values that you need to enter. If you have a larger process, then it will take more time. With all that in mind, you can plan what you need also understanding which data that you need, and from there you can start to get to work. I hope you enjoyed this part of the analysis and explanation of Markov chains. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to my channel.